Not it! Hey guys, Starlin44 here. I need no introduction, but I got one anyway. Upon continuing my binge watching throughout the lockdown during the pandemic, I came across this animated marvel. Yes, during the lockdown, thanks to the wonders of the streaming service known as Netflix, I was introduced to this little Nickelodeon show called The Loud House. It began airing in the 2nd of May 2016 and it goes strong to this day. The show follows Lincoln Loud, the only boy and the middle child of a family of 11 children residing in the fictional town of Royal Woods, Michigan. He has 10 sisters with distinctive personalities consisting of bossy eldest sister Lori, ditzy fashion expert Lenny, musician Luna, comedian Luann, athletic Lynn Jr., gloomy poetic goth Lucy, polar opposite twins Lana and Lola, child genius Lisa and baby Lily. Lincoln occasionally breaks the fourth wall to explain to the viewers the chaotic conditions and sibling relationships of the household and continually devises plans to make his life in the Loud House better. The first four seasons of the show centered around the kids going about their everyday lives when the fifth season the Loud siblings were aged up to year with Laurie going to Fairway College, Lincoln going to middle school and Lily going to preschool. Having watched many episodes of the show, I can honestly say that this is one of the best things to come from Nickelodeon for a long time. And that's very funny coming from a guy who mostly grew up with Disney Channel and Cartoon Network. This whole idea of big families living together really reminds me of the Home Alone films. The original ones, I mean, not those crappy sequels from 3 to 5. Where you have a big family where they all argue with each other, but in the end they're still family and the spirit of Christmas shines through. That's pretty much the same with The Loud House, except it's all the year round. Just seeing these family members working off their different personalities, getting into squabbles with each other, but in the end making up with each other. Because as I said, they're family. The main element of the show that makes it so memorable and fun to watch for kids and even some adults is the characters. Mostly The Loud family. The focus at the start is Lincoln Loud, 11 year old, now 12 year old boy, with white hair. He is the middle child and the only son of The Loud family. A recurring trait throughout the series involves Lincoln breaking the fourth wall by talking to the audience about surviving with all his sisters as well as considering himself a man with a plan. He tries to give helpful advice when dealing with sibling relationships. The opening theme song for the show always makes it seem like Lincoln's going to be the main focus of the entire show, but that's not always the case. Okay, we do get a lot of episodes where he's the main focus, but the majority of the other episodes are usually him surviving with his sisters, getting along with his sisters by bonding with them, and other times they do focus on the other siblings. It could have been easy for them to have just made the show all about Lincoln Lounge, like the title song descripts. I mean, it talks about how Lincoln's one boy in a family of ten girls. But they go out of their way to focus on every lounge in the show. And that's just a part of what makes the show so memorable. There's Lori Loud, the eldest sibling, in the first season, she mostly comes off as bossy and kind of a bitch towards her siblings, especially Lincoln. But as the show goes on, she does start to simmer down a bit and show a little bit more love and respect for her siblings. Lenny now is the second child of the Loud family. She's mentally challenged but compassionate and physically strong and curious in the way of the show. While she may not be smart smart, she's very smart when it comes to fashion. I mean, if you ever have a fashion question, then Lenny's always the one to go to. And her voice actress has one hell of a set of lungs. One of my favourite siblings, Luna Loud, is the 15 year old child who loves rock and roll. Every time you see her, she's either rocking out with her guitar or making references to various songs that existed in the past. Luna's a character that I can also relate to because she loves rock and roll. And I'm a great lover of big bands like Shed 7. So I 
can relate to her love of rock and roll. And damn is her singing voice beautiful. <laughs> That's voice actress Nika Futterman voicing her, and damn does she have a beautiful voice. Every time she shows up or is the main focus of the episode, you know that it's gonna be good when we see her. I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Luann is the only one that I find the least interesting, since her character trait is mostly being a comedian and telling really bad jokes. And she does a lot of practical jokes, especially around April Fool's Day. But this trait could get really old really fast for some people. But that some fans can get some good laugh out of her with her bad jokes. So some people might like her, but I find her the least interesting of the bunch. Lynn Lowndes Jr. is the sporty kind of girl who loves and competing for various sports like say basketball, baseball, hockey, you name it. She even gets super competitive when it comes to board games, gloating over her victories to the siblings, which can get on their nerves. And I can understand that since I've played games for various people that can be too competitive as well. There's Lucy Lamb, the goth sister that loves vampires. She has this funny gag where she just pops up out of nowhere, which often frightens her siblings. And if you love goth girls and all that stuff, then you're really going to get into this character. Another one of my favourite siblings, Lana Lamb, voiced by famous actress Grey Griffin, who loves getting dirty and animals. Lana was the first Lamb to make me really get into this show. I just love how boyish she is and not very girlish she is with her antics. She mostly loves to play in the mud and get her hands dirty, and she's a real whiz when it comes to unclogging the toilet and fitting up Fanzilla, the family's fan. And she has a really good relationship with animals, especially her friend Hops the Frog. There's her twin sister Lola Loud, also voiced by Grey Griffin, who comes across as kind of a spoiled brat kind of kid who likes to get her own way. But she is more than that, and she's a girl that likes to enter talent show passions and loves dressing up for occasions. And she can also get kind of insane when she doesn't get her way. And one of my favourite reactions from Lola is this. Now I don't know if any girl out there goes this gaga over glitter, but all I know is it's funny as hell. There's Lisa Loud, the girl genius of the family, who loves dabbing into inventions. Yeah, it's funny how the parents let her dabble with inventions and chemicals and yet won't let her use a butter knife. She seems to be pretty reckless with her experiments and forcibly getting samples from her family members. That's not at all disturbing. And my other favourite loud is Baby Lily, also voiced by Greg Griffin. During the first four seasons, she used to have this habit of losing her diaper, causing her to go naked, and also causing her fellow siblings to put her diaper back on. In the first four seasons, she usually spoke gibberish, as babies do when they're still getting used to their words. But her most common word was poo poo. And Lincoln and Luna are usually the ones that hang out with her the most. Looking after her, changing her, feeding her, you name it. And Lily's another one of those sweet, adorable characters that you just can't help but love. And it's not always easy to make a baby interesting in shows these days. In some cases, babies wouldn't be the most interesting characters in these kind of shows. But because she's so adorable, you can't help but love her. From the fifth season onwards, she now speaks in some sentences, referring to herself in the third person. So it's nice to show that the siblings do get older in this cartoon show. Something that The Simpsons really should be doing. Yeah, I went there. And then you have the parents, Lynn Loud Sr. and Rita. Lynn owns his own restaurant, as he's a wizard cooking. And you can see where some of the siblings get some of their traits from. If, for example, Laurie getting over dramatic about Finns, Luann's bad jokes, Luna's love for music, so and so on and so forth. And Rita is very caring towards the children, but is not afraid to punish them if their fighting goes too far. One interesting thing about these two is the fact that in the first season you never see their faces. All you see is their bodies and the lower parts of their faces, but you never see their actual faces. Then from season 2 onwards they started to show their faces more often. My guess is in the first season they couldn't think of any stories where the parents would have a big role. But from season 2 onwards they play a big role in these, some episodes. And we have a whole range of other characters like Clyde McBride, Lincoln's best friend, Ronnie Ann, Lincoln's other best friend, and many others. What makes these characters all stand out in this show, especially the minor characters, is the fact that they're all identifiable. I mean, we even knew a lot of these characters at some point in our lives, or at some point in our lives were at least one of the characters. Each of them is identifiable and relatable, because we've all seen people like that in our lives. 
Like we've all seen the elderly bold grumpy neighbour Mr. Grouse played by Bender the Robot, the cheap smug rip-off artist gas station owner Flip Force voiced by Bender the Robot, and that's just one of the charms of this show. Every character is identifiable because they all represent someone we've come across in our lives, or represent how we used to be in our lives. The show is currently in its fifth season, with a spin-off series titled The Casa Grande starring Lincoln's friend Ronnie Anne, and a feature-length film will be developed and released on Netflix in 2021. Another thing that makes this show stand out for me is the great plot lines they come up with. Each episode of the show has the Loud family members, or at least a few of the Loud family members, going through some various situations that we would go through in everyday life. Of course, they add some cartoony antics to it, as you'd expect from a cartoon series. But most of the things they go through in the episodes is just something that we all go through in our lives, like trying to find your parents the perfect gift, getting along with your siblings, and so on and so forth. Another one of the best elements of this show is that they often take the time to have Lincoln bond with his sisters. And that's great, in my opinion. The Loud House is one of those shows that you can really have a great time watching and think to yourself, yeah, I've been through that once in my lifetime. Because each character is identifiable and all the scenarios they get up to is just some of the things that we often get up to in our lives or had gone through in our lives. And those are just every bit of appeal to the show, in my opinion. The characters, the storylines and the great relationships that they have and the fact that each sibling represents one of us or someone that we knew. Not to mention it's one of the best shows that Nickelodeon has ever come up with in years. I mean, we all remember how good Rugrats and Spongebob Squarepants was back in the day, but Rugrats ended and Spongebob Squarepants isn't as good as it used to be. Much like the current Simpsons. The Loud House is definitely a fun animated show and a good watch if you want to find something to binge watch during the pandemic. And as I said, it's one of the best things to come out of Nickelodeon for years. And if you haven't seen The Loud House yet, I would highly recommend checking it out if you're a lover of animation. It's one of the best shows to come from Nickelodeon in a long time. You'll have a blast watching all of these characters get up to all kinds of crazy cartoonish antics, and you might be able to find a character or two that you can relate to or think back in how you used to be in your youth. So go ahead and check out The Loud House and see what you may have been missing out on. I'm Dalek44, and I'll see you next time, folks.